This is a future gen system I designed for my future Voron 2 printer. A circulated setup that maintains enclosure temperatures while filtering out VOCs and particulate matter. It also monitors air quality at both the in there and out there. So you can visualize the filter's effectiveness and know exactly when to swap up the cartridges. With more people 3D printing in enclosed spaces, Managing air quality isn't just about comfort. It's an important part of protecting your health and equipment. In this episode, I'll walk you through how it works and share the challenges I face while building this prototype. Hi, welcome to Slow Engineering. I'm David. With the main PCB ready, it was time to assemble the rest of the system including the control board, blower driver, and sensors, all housed neatly in one unit. Let's start from the bottom section. At the heart is the blower fan, pulling air from behind the filter cartridges. Right after the fan, I've added sensors to measure the air quality at the outlet. A small display is also built here showing real-time readings from both inlet and outlet sensors. Once the display housings was installed, I mounted the bottom adapters for the filter cartridges. The wires here connect to the inlet sensors. I used small magnets with pogo pins at the center to transmit power and data between the lower and upper sections. These wires run through the display housings and plug directly into the main PCB. This section also has a fan fixture secured with four corner screws, keeping everything aligned and sandwiching the fan tightly between components. Next, I install the main PCB into its housing, which forms the system space. After connecting all the cables, I secured the PCB housing to the lower unit with four more screws, finishing up the bottom half.
Now move on to the upper half, which contains the second set of the inlet sensors. Unlike the lower part, I designed these top sections to be rotatable. It can be installed in either direction. That meant running two sets of power and data lines to maintain conductivity regardless of orientation. That part was fairly straightforward. But the cartridges, that's where things got tricky. They may look simple, but assembling them was the most frustrating part. The magnets here don't just help with the alignment. There are also the connectors for power and data. Each cartridge links at both ends using magnets with pogo pins. So their positioning must be precise. At first, I tried a press fit method, designed the hole slightly smaller, so the magnets could be forced in. That worked okay for the bottom, where the housings has the same level as the holes. However, on the top, even slight difference in hole size caused issues, especially with the four corner magnets which need to stick out just a bit to compensate for a soft TPU sealing layer for an airtight fit. These upper magnets are male connectors, and uneven fits make installation painful. Initially, I planned to skip the soft sealing layer and rely on tight tolerance cartridge shells. However, I ended up loosening the tolerance for better usability and added TPU to close the gaps. That meant the magnet has to protrude slightly more to account for the thickness of the TPU. To standardize the magnet holes, I first tried using a hand rimmer, but the taper tip didn't work well with shallow non-through holes. I also tested a woodworking bottom clinic bit, but the results were inconsistent. Finally, I switched to a machine rimmer with a flatter tip which gave me clean, uniform holes for press fitting the magnets properly. I avoid glue here because I need the magnets to conduct electricity. It wasn't just hole tolerance causing problems. The wires between the top and bottom magnets also created soldering headaches especially when they were too short. But longer wires were just as bad. They could get pinched or shorted out during installation. To fix this, I added internal grooves between the holes to give the wires some space and reduce the risk of short circuit damage. I also consider switching the magnet holes from cylinders to slotted clamps to make them easier to adjust. Or remove if needed. Each cartridge holds granular media, 
Activate the carbons and activate the alumina. Supported by a mesh. I use filter bags to make filling and replacing the media easier. On top of that, a pre-filter can be placed. Using active-free activated carbon is important to prevent corrosion inside your printer. The activating alumina is placed behind the carbon cartridge to absorb moisture and exit, helping protect the printer. To lower cartridge, just insert a filter bag. Make sure the bag fills the inner walls. Pour in the media. Then tuck the bag down and tuck it off with a pre-filter. Replacing it is just as simple. Pour out the bag and repeat the process. The prefilter is a fiber layer that captures larger particles before they hit the granular media. It's sandwiched between two magnetic meshes, so you can easily attach it in front of any cartridge to customize your filtration stack. The HEPA filter is even simpler. Just press fit tightly into its housing to prevent air linkage. You can also add a pre-filter in front of it to catch larger particles, like loose carbon or alumina granules. To connect the whole system to the 3D printer, I design clamps and adapters that lock the tubing in place. The filtration unit has groups on both the inlet and outlet sides for the clamps. While the enclosure adapter can be attached using double side tape or screws for an airtight seal. I also make a tapered intake dock. This could be handy for extracting fumes if you are soldering in an enclosed space. Let's look at the blower band operation on the filtration system. With all three cartridges in place, activate the carbon, activate the alumina, and HEPA, the system effectively reduces VOCs, lowers humidity, and manages airflow pressure between the in there and out there. So that's the current state of the prototype. Just one part of the full top half system. What do you think? I'd love to hear your feedback. In the next episode, we'll get back to the main top head project. As always, thanks for watching and keep moving forward.